Hey guys, I just wanted to give you guys a little overview of this 100 kilohertz to 65 megahertz LED RF signal frequency counter that I got off of eBay. These are all over um, eBay as you might be able to, well, if I can get the right tab up. These are all over eBay. Um, they all mostly use the same picture. There's a couple of 2.5 gigahertz models. There's some different colors. Um, but they're all pretty much um, the same thing. The model number on this is PLJ6LED-A2. It's made by a company that it looks like... It almost looks like San Juan. S-A-N-J-I-A-N. And I'll type that up in the uh, description. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce that right now. Um, but if you know how to use a frequency counter, you pretty much it's simple. Feed your power, feed your RF input. Um, but you do have a couple of buttons on here as you might be able to see when the camera focuses. One looks like a triangle, the other one looks like, well, a backup button. Um, and this is not only to change the mode selection of the sensitivity, but it also lets you change your brightness, and it also lets you program your IF offsets. Uh, when I got this, it was way too bright, and I thought maybe one of these two pots in the back were brightness control. They're not. I would not touch them. I had a, uh, luckily had a crystal oscillator nearby that I knew I watched what the output was and quickly realized that either of these don't change brightness. So, since I didn't get any instructions and I figured some of you people might be wondering how do we use this thing, I'm going to show you what the buttons do. So the first thing I need to do is I need to plug my power up, which is just, it's clip lead to a 9 volt battery. Nothing simple, nothing complex. I haven't had a chance to build a case for it. So I'll plug it in. If we can get it to stay plugged in. I am sorry about that. So now we have it plugged in. And you can see we're currently sitting in 10 hertz resolution. I don't know if you can see the decimal point, but there is a decimal point lit up there. And there's one there. And that's actually not the default mode. The default mode these things come in is a uh, full-on 10 hertz mode um, and this this really just literally changes your decimal point um, the downside of this meter is obviously if you look every digits lit up so you get over 10 megahertz and uh, you're not going to be able to see the full frequency with 10 hertz resolution but it will still accurately display everything so if you press this top button You'll notice it's going to cycle up. Um, mine says 450. Um, this is the IF offset, which I will show you how to program in a minute. This lets you specify whether it's an upper or lower IF offset, which I will explain in a minute. Uh, but this last one you want to look at is the brightness. As you can see, mine says 2. Yours will probably say 1 or, or 8. Uh, but once you're here, you can change it with the bottom button. As you can see, the brighter it gets, the angrier my camera sensor becomes. So I'm going to drop this back down to 1 and hope that uh, it will work well enough for the rest of the demonstrations. Okay, so obviously we covered that. Um, the IF offset is kind of handy if you're using this with a super heterodyne radio or maybe you're using this as part of your transmitter rig and your actual output frequency is going to be different, this allows you to program the offset. Um, in order to do this, and I've played with the buttons every which way, you actually have to cycle the first digit back around to zero unless you want more than a 10 megahertz offset. But once you cycle that, then you press the top button to cycle through your digits. And once you're once you cycle through, then it goes right back into counting mode. Of course, if this is if your offset's right, but it's the wrong way, you have to go back and press this button twice. And once you're at this menu or this option, you can press the bottom button to change whether you want a higher IF offset or a low IF offset. And uh, that basically basically covers it. Um, 
I'll, I'll actually type up the instructions in the description because obviously I'm trying to videotape while doing everything and it doesn't work. But uh, hopefully some of the visuals will come in handy if you're trying to use one of these. And I have to say, these are really, really neat handy units. I mean, it runs off a 9-volt battery. Um, I, it's got a, I think it's a 60-microvolt peak-to-peak input on the RF. Um, I've used it with the local oscillator of a Harman Kardon tuner on AM. I've used it to play to check my signal generator, which is why I bought it. Um, and really, for um, about 10 or 11 bucks, if you want to add frequency readout to something permanently, well, this is small enough. It's uh, three and a half inches by one inch by one inch deep. It'll mount right into a uh, into a panel. So there you have it. If you in the market for a frequency counter under 65 megahertz, you can't go wrong. Um, just as to show you an example, um, this one right now, as of today's date, which is 7-11 day, uh, this is 13.29. This one's you know 13.42, and of course you can get the uh, 2.4 gigahertz model for around 16 dollars. And really, it's not not too horrible of a deal. So anyway, I hope some of you guys have found this useful and getting this to work the way you want it to and to everyone who bought one have a lot of fun with it. I know some of you guys will be using it to do something fun. Some of you guys are probably doing work with it but um, it does work as a really awesome standalone counter and I have a couple of videos of this with my vintage signal generator as well as with this Harman Kardon TU-910 tuner sitting up here. Uh, so you can check out my feed and, and look at those if you want. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. Take it easy.